Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Sukruta, and I'm going to be talking to you about how you can simplify formula creation with AI. Is everyone having a good time so far at TDX? How was the concert yesterday? Good? I, I missed the concert, but it seemed like it was awesome. <laughs> Just wait for a few more seconds for people to trickle in. All right. Like I said, welcome. We'll be talking about how we're going to use AI to simplify formula creation. First, I want to talk about the forward-looking statement. We're going to be talking about future-facing things. So please do make your purchasing decisions on what's already out there. So the agenda today is about formulas, how we can make it easier for you using AI. So with that, I'll start off with talking about what formulas I'm talking about when I talk, talk about making it easier for you. We'll next go back in time and dive into a little bit of history about formulas and why we thought this was needed. After that, we'll talk about Einstein for formulas, which is the crux of the topic today. And finally, I'll go into how it all works and what my team's been working really, really hard on so far and how we've gotten here. So let's dive right in. So which formulas are we talking about when we're talking about simplifying it? It's three kinds of formulas. First, formula fields. Second, default field values. And third, validation rules. I'm sure you all are familiar with all three of these formulas. They're used by so many admins almost all day, every day. For all three of these formulas, you'll be able to access them via Object Manager. The first two, formula fields and default field values, are accessed through fields and relationships. And validation rules have their own section. So let's do a little bit of a rewind, right? A little bit of history. How did we get here? Because you have to be able to know the past to understand the present. And a wise person said that. That wise person was me. I'm kidding. I said that, but I wasn't the first person to say it. Carl Sagan is a famous astronomer, very, very decorated, and he said it first. But it doesn't matter. I said it later. You all can say it too. And why put a good quote to waste, right? So last year, when everybody was talking about Gen AI, and we were like, wow, it's so cool. It's making all our jobs easier. It can think for us. It can write for us. And so we're like, let's go ask our admins, how do we make your life easier? How do we simplify your life using Gen AI? And we got a ton of responses. Some of the responses were surprising. Some of the responses were not so surprising. But it all started to make sense the more time we spent looking at the responses. As an example, people asked for help with flows. People asked with help with creating reports. It was all tied down to how do we simplify the time spent as an admin. So we took all this, these answers, we took all this data, we crunched the numbers, we tried to make sense of it all, and guess what? Patterns began to emerge. So you'll see here highlighted the, the responses that we got are tied to formulas. People want help with saving time writing formulas. Formulas are pretty complicated. I don't think anyone's doubting that. People are asking with help on how to understand or create formulas. People need help with the syntax, not just for formulas, but generally. So let's go back, like I said, and talk about how we got here. In 2005 is when we actually introduced formulas. By the way, that feels like yesterday to me. And it was very depressing when I learned it was 18 years ago. <laughs> so that just says how old I feel now. But in all of that time, there's a lot that's happened with formulas. Every single month, believe it or not, 326 million formulas are either created or edited every month. That just means our formula engine is run those many times every month. 
Imagine if we made it easier, this number would be even higher. Not just that, over time, we have made it, intended to make it easier for y'all by adding more operators and more functions. But with more and more comes, oh my gosh, how do you keep track of all of this? I don't think there's anyone who like, has fully memorized all the operators, all the functions, and that's why we have cheat sheets galore online. We also, as a result, not surprising whatsoever, have 300 new formula questions every single month on the Trailblazer community. And by the way, that's just the questions that are tagged formula. I'm pretty certain there's a lot more. Right now, what's our solution? We provide you with hundreds of examples. So many examples online or our public documentation. There's a lot of wonderful partners that have written their own version, like I said, cheat sheets. But is that enough? Clearly not. Formulas are difficult, formulas are hard, and we want to make everybody's life easier. So we put our thinking hats together, and we're like, what can we do with this? How can we make it simpler? I'm trying to build tension here, guys. <laughs> All right, enough tension. This is why we have Einstein for formulas. The idea, like I said, was to make your life easier. So with that, we want to help you understand, debug, and create formulas. So let's go into the use cases we support. Scenario one, explaining a formula using natural language. I don't think you're going to ask me why we want to do this or why we've done this, but the reality is it's really hard to just look at a formula and know what it does. It's hard when someone else has written it, which happens all the time. Admins have to look at formulas that they did not write. And by the way, I have trouble understanding the formulas I've written. Just like a month later, and I'm like, what did I write? What is this? So look at this example, just to drive my point home a little bit more. Can anyone tell me what they think this formula does? I'll give you a little bit of time. Raise your hand, guess. I can see everyone thinking and computing. Lots of experts in this room. The gentleman in the front did a great job trying to translate that. I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do my best now. Basically, it's to categorize accounts based on billing country, type, installation partner into warm, hot, and cold. Let's look at this even more convoluted example. Gosh, I'm getting cross-eyed just looking at this. I'm not going to like pain you for too long about this one, but this, was just meant, this is just a formula that's meant to count the number of business days between two dates, including public holidays and weekends. And this is what it looks like. Example three. Does anyone know what this one is? I'm kidding. It's never too many Einstein references. All right, so let's go into the demo. And I'm, I have the privilege of showing you what my team has been working really, really hard on. This is the demo to explain formulas. So here's the formula field for account. And you'll see this formula that's written here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? So I edit it. And I see this handy tool here. And it tells me to explain, click on Explain Formulas, our new shiny button. Here you see the response coming so quickly. And by the way, if I feel like that response and that translation of this formula is not detailed enough, I have the option to see a verbose response. Wow! Isn't this amazing and incredible? Thank you for all the people who clapped. <laughs> all right, I'm 
going to dazzle you some more. Here's another one. Whoa! <laughs> Here's the verbose response. This is the one that calculates the number of business days. It also, in the verbose response, has put in the field names and how it has calculated it, what exactly it's calculating, and it explains the formula a little bit more in this one. All right, now that I've dazzled you with scenario one, let's go into scenario two. This one is in cur currently in development as we speak. My team's really working hard on this one, so I don't have a demo, but I'm gonna explain it, and then I'll show you a screenshot. So this one is to get, help you to fix a formula. And by the way, the number of customers who tend to ask us and assume that there's something wrong and formulas are not working, when it ends up being that the formula just needs fixing, is, is hard to even count. So that led us to this obvious choice of investing in this one. So here's the screenshot that I promised you. Um, I do know that y'all are probably thinking that there's already uh, help that we provide with syntax correction right now. But guess what? That doesn't help you with telling you exactly where the issue is and actually fixing the formula for you. That's why we wanted to go one step ahead. If you look to the right panel, you'll see that it's telling you exactly what's missing in the formula. It suggests a correction. And it gives you the option to actually replace your formula entirely with the corrected one. So in this case, the parenthesis was missing. And then it went ahead and told you where it needs to be. It did it for you. And then you choose to replace it. Voila. <laughs> All right, scenario three. This one is going to get more, more work. There's a lot more research that's going on, and this is also actively in development. With this one, we want you to just sit on your hands and blink and have the formula created for you. No, I'm kidding. We want you to be able to describe the formula that you want and get the formula created for you. So how does it all work under the hood? I did promise you we were going to explain how we all do all of this. and. The TLDR version is that we are integrating our formula engine with the OpenAI APIs, which is the same one that's powering uh, ChatGPT. But there's more to it. And I'm going to walk over the steps uh, one at a time for you. So let's take the first example that I showed you a demo for. That's the one where we explain the formula for you. So in the first step, we add that formula that you want explained to the prompt. But that's not enough. We need to enrich the prompt with context, instructions, grounding data, and such. A lot of that is just standard practice. A lot of it is us wanting higher accuracy. And then next, we send this enriched prompt to the OpenAI LLM, after which we display the response. So I'm going to walk you through an example here. This is the example where we're asking, if you take your eyes to the bottom of the slide, you'll see that it, it, the, the prompt says, explain the fo following formula, and it actually puts in the example of the formula. So this is what we start with. And this is what we end up with before we send it to the LLM. I'm going to explain and break this one down so you know what we're doing here. This is what the enriched prompt looks like. So in this first part of it, we're focused on context setting. This is standard practice. Here we're telling the LLM what, who the target audience is so they can better craft the response. Next, we focus on error handling. Remember when I said in the previous slide that we show you as the admin the response from the LLM? Well, I lied. We don't just show it to you. We ask for what format. We want it in, and then in case of errors, we handle it before you see it. Next, and this is also industry practice, ethical scope. We want the LLM to know that they, need, they must treat everyone equally, despite sexual orientation, religions, and whatnot. We want a response that's free of bias. 
Next is injection defense. With this one, we tell the LLM exactly what to do and not to do anything else. So here it is. This is what your response must consist of. And this is what you're doing. Don't do anything else. Some more context setting. So with this one, this is really, really important for higher accuracy. Here we tell the LLM what the object is, what the parent object is, what the associated fields are, the labels, so that the explanation, if you remember the verbose response of the explanation, it actually had field names in it. So we want to provide as much detail as possible so you're not reading between the lines. And here's where we specify the response format. The response format we specify is we want it in JSON. And we ask the LLM to strictly follow that format. Don't do anything else. And finally, it's the formula, without which none of this will make sense. So like I said, this is the end result that we sent to the LLM. While you might write the formula and what you want explained, this is the entirety of what it ends up being that's been sent. So I'll let you all take a photo if you'd like. All right, so let's recap. You're going to want to, oh, photos. So let's recap. I don't want you all to leave thinking, what the heck did I just listen to? <laughs> I want you to remember the ne this next slide. So remember, I talked about the three use cases. Formula explanation, spring 2024. Go try it out. Next, formula debugging. We want you to help you help us, so we don't we don't need to you know, debug for you. This one's slated for summer of 2024. Like I said, my team's working really hard on the finishing touches of this one. And finally, formula creation, which I'm sure all of you will be waiting for. That's the one that we have scheduled for winter 2025. We're already started work on this, and we're you know, making sure that it's perfect for you all. Thank you so much. I'd love feedback. You know, we all thrive on feedback, so do send feedback. Um, and I really appreciate you all making time to attend this session today. Thank you.